We're back. Hi, everybody. This is Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman. We're inside the QLogic booth here on the floor in the exhibitor hall at Moscone South at Oracle Open World. Stop by. by. It's the 2100 hall. You come by, you'll see the lights, you'll see the QLogic booth. David Art is here. He runs OEM marketing for QLogic. David, first of all, thanks for having us in your booth. It's really great that you guys do that, and thanks for coming on theCUBE. Hi, thanks for having me. Glad to, have, glad to be here. Yeah, so this is our, our fourth year in a row at Open World. Um, we've seen Oracle transform as a, as a company, um, you know, really focusing on competing in the hardware business. Now, of course, they don't compete with you. <laughs> you guys are, uh, they're, you're a supplier to right. companies like Oracle, right. but uh, it's, it's interesting, you know, many of, uh, Oracle's traditional partners like Hewlett Packard and, and, e and EMC and, and, and many others are now in the line of fire. They're cooperating. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you guys have been consistent though. You're, you're, you continue to sell into that market space. So, so again, welcome and uh, give us the update on what's new with uh, QLogic and what's happening at Oracle Open World. Yeah, great. Well, we're, we're excited here to be here. We're, we're talking about a number of things while we're here. One of the things we're talking about is the, the newly, newly launched Oracle Sun Storage Universal HBA. Uh, and this is a very unique solution because it gives customers the ability to have a host bus adapter that provides both 16 gig capability as well as 10 gig ethernet capability all from the same base hardware set. So, from a customer standpoint, what, is that, what does that buy me? I mean, think through not only your OEM customer because you're saving real estate right. and cutting costs, but what does that mean for an end customer? Yeah, for an end customer, you know, they make an investment in their server and their IO, their, their storage interconnect in that server. And over the life of that server, they'd like to be able to maximize the investment there and not have to do rip and replace as their data center uh, needs change. And so this HBA gives them the ability to, to start in one uh, protocol and then as they have a need to change over time, they don't have to replace that card, uh, take that server down and be able to put in a new card to be able to transition to a new protocol uh, to, to adapt to their new uh, environment and the, and the changes in their data center. Yeah, David, so I'm excited for what you're announcing today because I've been talking for probably about four years now that the protocol wars really need to come to an end. Um, you know, I worked on fiber channel over Ethernet, which QLogic definitely supported, but everybody says, is it fiber channel? Is it iSCSI? Is it NFS? And what QLogic has done is you've got the same hardware can support really all of those protocols. So yeah. whether it's fiber channel or any of those Ethernet pieces, it's the same one. And can you explain what, what that really multi-protocol, how does that work? Is it really the same hardware? Can I switch from one to the other? And uh, you know, my understanding, this is the first OEM that's actually going to support all of those flavors. Yes, Oracle is the only OEM that's supporting both those capabilities from the same base set. Uh, and, and this really is, it, it truly is from one, one hardware H, a host bus adapter uh, through, the, through the, uh, the hardware integrated on the, on the board, you have the ability just by simply changing your configuration options in, in some of the configuration tools uh, and then changing out your optics, you can change it from one protocol to the other very simply. There's not, there's not a, any, any changes to the, to the board that have to happen other than just change out your optics change those configuration options, and there you go. Okay, you can change so, so, so the board says the same, I do have to change the, the optics on it, so yes. it, it's not fully a wire once deployment, um, but you know, I, I buy it, and if I'm fiber channel today, and down the road I want to switch that over to all Ethernet with 10 gig of Ethernet, I can do that, or vice versa, if I'm you know, saying, okay, I've got an Ethernet server, but you know, say it wants to be more storage heavy and move it over to fiber channel, I, I can make that change in the absolutely. future. Absolutely, absolutely, and that's the premise of the value of this, is it brings that, uh, that investment protection for customers to be able to invest in one uh, solution and then over time as their needs change, they can simply change that over without having to rip and replace the new hardware. Okay, can, can you give us the update then, you know, where do we stand with uh, th things like the adoption of 16 gig fiber channel in, in the market and how are you seeing it play out, the kind of fiber channel versus ethernet decision point for customers? That's a great question. You know, there's a, there's a big investment in the industry and in general in fiber channel. And so uh, what we're seeing is we're starting to see applications now that are becoming more more IO thirsty, uh, and they're starting to, to demand the higher uh, throughput of, uh, that 16 gig provides. So the adoption is not, I would not say rocketing, but it is starting to pick up now where customers are starting to realize the value that they get, especially in a true end-to-end -end 16 gig solution where you have 16 gig on the host and on the target side. Yeah, so is it speeds and feeds that customers are making that decision point, or is it kind of people, processes, and, and personnel as to, you know, when I compare, say, a 16 gig to a 10 or 40 gig Ethernet environment? I, I think a lot of it is protect investment protection, where they have the fiber channel investment already, it's very expensive to go rip that out and go to a new protocol. 
Uh, this gives them the ability to continue to scale that, uh, that application and the, and the uh, performance that they get from that application without having to make heavy uh, IT infrastructure changes in their environment. Okay, and uh, you know, fiber channel in general, is it, you know, is it declining, is it stable? You know, where, where are we with kind of just the macroeconomics of fiber channel? It, it, that's an interesting question. I, I'd say at this point, it's, it's continuing to be stable at this point. We're not seeing a, a mass decline there. Uh, again, because of the, uh, the amount of investment in that in uh, infrastructure and that protocol that's out in the market today. Um, but that being said, there is still um, uh, a lot of customers that are evaluating ways to be able to, to implement Ethernet in their environments, especially as they build out new data centers. So what are the big things that customers are asking you? you know, the, 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 the big three that they're putting pressure on you to respond to and how are you responding? Yeah, that's a great question. So there's uh, you know, a number of things when, it, when our customers come to us, they, wanna, they want stability, they want to be able to provide, uh, uh, have a, a, a vendor that provides the stability long term. Um, and you know, as you said earlier, uh, QLogic and Oracle have been working together for many, many years, over 15 years, when we actually developed the, the original Oracle storage uh, uh, stack, the Leadville, uh, and that, that is the foundation on which we continue to deliver and drive a hardened stack. And so, the customers want to be able to continue to have that stability to provide to their environments, um, and, and then and as well as continuing to look for new ways to innovate and and allow them to maximize on the investment that's in their infrastructure today without having to do expensive upgrades. A lot of hard work and glue underneath the covers Absolutely. that uh, a lot of people don't see. David, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE and uh, sharing your story, and uh, have a good rest of the show. All right, great, thanks for having me. All right, keep it right there, everybody. Uh, we're up next with Accenture. Accenture is one of the leading uh, consultancies and service providers, systems integrators, a big partner of Oracle, so keep it right there, we're right back. This is Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman, this is theCUBE.